a whole bridge can collapse under the force of human footsteps. Do you find it hard to believe? Such an event that happened back in 1906 with the Egyptian bridge in St. Petersburg is a perfect example. The bridge hung on sturdy metal chains, was supported by a cast iron framework, and seemed very strong and safe. All until a group of soldiers walked across it. The chains couldn't sustain the synchronous marching of between 120 and 160 soldiers. The chains tore and the bridge collapsed. History provides us with more examples of similar disastrous events. As a matter of fact, drill marching is strictly prohibited on bridges. Perhaps it's not permitted to jump on board aircraft for the same reason. After all, if massive bridges can't withstand the power of a large crowd, it's hard to imagine what might happen to an airliner. It's a scary but interesting thought. What would happen if all the passengers simultaneously jumped during flight? Would this trick end up as a terrible plane crash or perhaps will be just a fun idea for another flash mob? Let's say there are passengers on board the world's largest aircraft, the Boeing 777. The mass of the empty aircraft varies from 155 to 158 tons. With a full load, this number will increase to between 200 and 250 tons. On average, there are 500 passengers aboard the Boeing 777. If each of the passengers weigh about 75 kilograms or 165 pounds, then the total weight of the crowd will reach 37.5 tons. Now imagine such a heavy crowd jumping during flight to a height of almost a meter. It seems that this scenario would lead to terrible consequences. However, according to calculations, the downward movement of the aircraft, caused by the downward force of the jumping crowd, would only be 1.1 meters per second. This is negligible given the speed of the flight, 800 kilometers or 497 miles per hour. Therefore, the jump would cause a slight change in the trajectory of movement, but is unlikely to cause the aircraft to begin to crash. However, if passengers start partying like crazy on the plane and decide to jump a few hundred thousand times, it'll take twice as much fuel to counter the force of the jumping and keep the aircraft in a horizontal position. Additionally, the pilot will have to urgently look for some kind of emergency landing option because there may not be enough fuel to reach the final destination. Once, the pilot of a Boeing 737 found himself in a similar situation in 2004 when, during a flight, a group of passengers tried to storm the pilot's cabin. The passengers were not an organized terrorist group, as you might think, but just a violent handful of football fans. The fans were so disappointed with the loss of their team in the Champions League that they began to destroy and smash everything. The fans frantically shouted and jumped, rocking the plane at an altitude of 10 kilometers or about 6.2 miles, almost causing a massive plane crash. Fortunately, the crazy behavior of the fans was calmed down and the skilled pilot managed to stabilize the flight, avoiding a crash. However, there is still one condition under which unruly passengers could cause a plane to crash. If the oscillation frequency of the aircraft engines coincides with the frequency of the passengers jumping, then the plane will enter into resonance and fall to the ground. However, in order to achieve this resonance effect, all would need to work in a very precise and coordinated manner. Let's suppose that all 500 passengers were to form a huge cylinder in the front section of the plane made up of 10 tiers, each with 50 people. Thus, you get something like a single figure weighing 37.5 tons or 83,000 pounds. If, while in this formation, all passengers jump in unison, the liner will start to fly downward at an angle of 30 to 90 degrees towards the Earth's surface and crash. However, 
Such a complicated task, building complex figures from human bodies, would be necessary only at high altitude when the speed of the aircraft is at its maximum. During takeoff or landing, there are simpler ways that a crowd could bring down a plane. For example, all 500 people could simultaneously move to the nose or the tail of the aircraft and jump several times. The speed of the liner at the beginning and at the end of the flight is quite slow compared to the speed at altitude, so the pilot may not have enough time to stabilize the plane, which will certainly lead to a catastrophe. The crazy thing is that such cases have already occurred. The true reason for such accidents almost always turns out to be poorly secured cargo, though, not unruly passengers. So, on an IL-18 cargo plane, inattentive workers forgot to fix a roll of paper down tight in the front of the aircraft. At takeoff, the paper rolled into the back, which threw the aircraft off balance and led to a crash. The weight of the roll was only a few hundred kilograms. That is, it weighed as much as only a few people. With passenger planes, such accidents do not happen because the pilot always asks everyone to stay in their seats during takeoff and landing. All it might take is for passengers to ignore this request just once. A catastrophe would almost certainly happen. Now let's expand the scope a bit and not limit ourselves to aircraft and passengers. Could a larger number of people cause serious cataclysms such as earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis, or splitting of the Antarctic glaciers with their weight? When talking about a glacier, the answer is definitely yes. On average, a glacier has an area of 400 square kilometers. That's about 245 square miles. If you place the entire population of the planet on it and have them all jump, the enormous ice block will begin to pop and shatter into fragments in a relatively short time. Thus, jumping from one glacier to another, the humans will be able to destroy the entire ice sheet of Antarctica faster than global warming. In turn, to cause a tsunami would require a much smaller number of people. Just 300,000 people would be enough to get the job done. This is roughly the population of Port Moresby the capital of Papua New Guinea. Needless to say, a few other conditions have to be met in order for the tsunami to occur. All the people would need to be gathered into a cube of 200 square meters, or about 656 square feet, and this structure would have to be plunged into the ocean at a speed of 20 kilometers, or 12 miles a second. Huge waves with a height of several hundred meters will form at the point of impact. However, at a distance of 30 kilometers or about 18 miles from the epicenter, the waves will decrease to 60 meters or about 196 feet. After a thousand kilometers, their height will not exceed even 10 meters or 33 feet. After such a well-coordinated accomplishment, people will absolutely thank each other and give each other a big high five. If all the people of the planet were to do so at the same time and in one place, it would cause a sound of about 200 decibels, which is above the pain threshold. In this case, eardrums would not be able to withstand this hellish sound and would burst, leaving all of humanity deaf forever. The only thing that mankind cannot do is to cause earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. For a jump capable of making the whole Earth shudder, it would take 100 million times more people than there are on the planet now. True, there would also be the possibility that there simply wouldn't be enough space to jump. But to form a human bridge around the Earth, we have enough of both people and space. If all 7.6 billion people join hands, we'll be able to go around the planet 200 times. At the same time, the width of such a human bridge will reach only 60 meters. There are many other incredible things that people can do just by gathering together. 
Unfortunately, there's not enough time to tell you about all of them in just one episode. How would you like to see human power in action do some unusual things? Write your craziest ideas in the comments and we'll make the same crazy episodes for them. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell to turn on notifications about new videos and stay with us. There's still a lot more interesting videos ahead. And oh yeah, don't forget to recommend us to your friends. Science is much more fun together.